Hi, this is Daryl Tank with Five Pencil Method. I always like to try and if I if I can to answer questions that come up often and often they're repetitive questions. Uh, with all these years, there's new people coming in and and it's hard to maybe find that one little place that talks about what I'm going to say right now. But asking what kind of paper, I'm going to add a few other things to that just to kind of give you a few hints on how to get started and and part of why I choose the paper that I have. Um, Let's go ahead and see. I am drawing uh, the major part of my uh, drawings uh, on uh, Series 300, Strathmore, Bristol, Vellum. The vellum is very important. It has more texture. They also have a smooth surface. And we don't want the smooth for this particular type of drawing that I'm working on. Um, we want to make sure that we've not only got the right paper, but that uh, we're removing that one sheet with several things in mind. One of them is there's a front and back to the paper that is important. The front side is the one that's up and you know underneath the cover and it has a, a heavier texture. And so especially when you, you can see some of this, this is the glue. Uh, I've already removed a sheet or two from this tablet but the glue that they use, uh, you know, I, it, it's, it's grabbing that paper pretty good at that uh, end. Uh, and so I don't want to have to tug if you've never done this before. I, I'm going to be very, very simple. This is not something that I want to just struggle with and struggle with because I don't want to end up with a a dimple because I'm I'm trying to uh, pull the paper out. You might be able to see that. Uh, let's just point it that way. Once you have a dent in your paper because you're trying to grip this and and maybe you're not careful about how you even put it off to the side or somebody else wants to see your drawing and they may grab it and actually you know make a dent in the paper. And so that dent will never go away. It's there when it's framed. It's it's everywhere unless you have it, you know, mounted, uh, you know, hot pressed onto a board, and we don't want to do that unless you absolutely have to. And I want to leave everything as natural as possible. I think a framer, a good framer, will tell you that as well. But you don't want this because if somebody was, you don't know what direction, uh, you can't tell that that dent's there, but you can if the light is coming from one direction. And so you don't know if somebody's going to hang it in a place where maybe a light is primarily from one side to the other, and then you end up by having uh, that dent become very noticeable. So I want to be able to remove it properly and it's very simple. You don't have to struggle with it. You just hold this down, take this one corner and just take this and pull towards that opposite corner. Okay, you take a hold of this and you, you know, just start pulling this up so that it comes a little bit by little bit to that other corner. And uh, that will help you avoid grabbing this too tightly and having that dent show. So now uh, I want to be able to be, in, you know, uh, consider something else very important. They uh, expect you to work on the surface that's up. So when I pull this away, this is the surface they expect you to work on. But the surfaces are, are different on each side. The backside doesn't have quite as much texture. And uh, I like it because it's not too dominant. I, I, want, I, I love the texture. I want that texture. I value the texture. It helps me do so many different things, especially with my technique as I put it down. I'm taking into consideration how I'm going to refine or utilize uh, the texture to do what I want to do. I can do it very smooth or I can use that texture to my advantage and make a heavier texture in my drawing. But this is, this is the side they want you to go on. I found that the other side is just a little bit smoother and it gives me almost all the same advantages and yet I don't have to fight that texture and have it be dominant in any way. Okay, and, and this is a good, uh, it's not, this paper is great too because it doesn't have, uh, you know, things in rows. You'll, you'll notice that this is uh, diagonal and it's also got rows of those, you know, the texture. And I don't want anything like that in a face. I want it to be very random. And so this paper 
is not uh, structured in a way that it shows a pattern. This is very random and I find it's just perfect uh, for uh, whether it's a baby or an old man or a piece of wood. It just works wonderful because it, I'm the one making the decisions on how I'm going to utilize that texture. Okay, now let's see if I'm up. Let's just take a look at this. How do you tell if you take that piece of paper out and you set it off to the side, how are you going to tell which side it is? Well, first of all, I'm going to establish what side and then I'm going to mark it. But I want my light to be off at, at, a, at an angle <laughs> Here's my, that I was so zoomed in. Uh, I want my light over there and less light over here. And you can see right away uh, why I want to do that as well. I can tell what the texture is this way. And I can also avoid having to draw in a shadow. Over here, it's brighter, you know. Over there, I, I can put my point of the pencil down and I can see exactly where it's touching the paper. So when I make a new line or, or any, any mark on there at all, I'm not drawing over here in the shadow. In the studio here, I have to have a number of lights. So that's why you see all these different, uh, you know, segmented uh, shadows and bright places. Uh, and also, uh, over here, again, I don't have my hand creating a shadow. I don't have the pencil creating a shadow. There is a shadow here, you can see. If I do this, and everything always gets darker to where there's less light. So the closer it gets to the contact point, the darker it's going to be. So I want to be able to see that, and the way I can see it is to, I just enlarged it to hopefully establish this. We're going to be able to see that there is one side casting a, a shadow. This is so uh, close up that it's hard to keep my pencil still. But the shadow is on the right side, just like my hand is creating more of a shadow on the right side. And the bright side is the part that the light is hitting on that surface that's angled just right to capture the light. Okay, so there's many reasons why that's, that's uh, important and it's played out in a number of ways. And uh, as we go through the method, uh, it'll help understand, help you understand and understand why uh, we are making some choices. Okay, so now what do I want to do? I want to go over to the other side and you can see that it's, it's textured but not as heavily. Okay, and that's the side I want. I want to be able to mark that, maybe put a little, a little uh, X or circle up there and so that when I set it down, maybe the phone rang or whatever, when I set it down, I can always know what side I am going to continue working on or start working on. Okay, and that light is very, very important in, in several ways. Uh, we want to be able to have, you know, I'm zoom out here a little bit, we don't need it enlarged that much, but my, uh, my light is very important in that if I have several lights, like I've shown you, I have several lights here, I'm going to have maybe several different levels of shadow. And if I had another brighter light over here, it would be casting a shadow over here, and then I'd have shadows on both sides. Well, that also uh, creates a problem, and uh, I want to be able to uh, avoid that. So even if you are, let's just take this piece of paper. If you're, if you're sitting at a table, and here's, here's your, I'm going to make it very thick. Here's your, your work and you have to make sure that your light's coming from a certain way and and here is your hand i would i would say come in like this and shine it that direction so when i'm working again i don't have that shadow over here everything is going to be in the shadow and that is what's going to make it difficult and so i've avoided that entirely all right, so if you're sitting in a room where the, uh, the light is in the ceiling, well, then you just make sure that you're sitting uh, far enough over this way that that light in the ceiling is not shining right over the top, but we can go ahead and have it over here. And you can sit on one side of the table or another to compensate for that. 
and not have to worry about creating that shadow. And you don't want to have something right over the top because that is going to eliminate all shadows. And you don't want to eliminate all the shadows because you want to be able to see that texture and, and also your hand uh, without casting a shadow on your drawing. So it's much better for you to have it over here, have a clear open part to draw. And I usually draw this way anyway. I can go both ways, but still, I don't have that shadow from my hand. And that's about the best way I can go ahead and illustrate that. I don't want any restrictions created to make my drawing even minutely uh, more difficult. I want to be able to see everything clearly. Often I tell people, I want to teach you how to see. And it's just one more small, important element in this whole process. So uh, make sure you have one light source. And you know you don't want to draw in the dark but make sure that you're casting a shadow away. If you're right-handed, it's shining into your hand. If you're uh, left-handed, you want to be able to have the light coming in from this direction or this direction. And then this side is, is uh, got the shadow on it. So anyway, I hope that helps a little bit, uh, clear up a little uh, confusion that people might have when they are just saying, well, okay, I draw in my office, I draw everywhere, I draw while I'm watching TV, and I haven't really thought about the direction of the light, and it can make so much difference. Adequate lighting, making sure that it's from the appropriate direction, and, uh, and not have it down right over the top so that you have no, no shadow. That also with graphite is an advantage because you don't want to have that light reflecting uh, back at you. Oh, here, I just did that without showing you. Okay, so you don't want to have this right over the top because it eliminates all shadow. And that takes away the grain. It takes away uh, the opportunity for you to see a true value from your pencils because uh, graphite is very shiny. It can be. Uh, if you follow the method, it will be much, much less of a problem but you don't want this shining the uh, uh, on the graphite and having it reflect back up in your eyes and you won't be able to see the true value that you're creating with your pencils. So a lot more to tell you about, but that I hope will help. And we'll see you next time. Appreciate you stopping by and just taking a little bit to watch.